Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with the September 12th balance adjustment preview that was just shown earlier this morning over on Stoke. You already know the drill. Basically, we take a look at the characters and artifacts that are on the adjustment list, talk about some of the things that may have landed them there in the first place, and see if the changes address those issues. A couple of announcements before we actually get into it. Number one, thank you to everybody who came out and wished me a happy birthday yesterday during my Twitch stream. Even if it was only for like five or 10 seconds, I really do appreciate that. Number two, if you are watching this video the day that it airs, the Epic 7 WC 2024 finals is tonight and I will be doing a watch along stream both here on YouTube as well as over on my Twitch. It starts at 11 p.m. EST, 8 p.m. PST, so make sure you tune in. Would love to see you there. Find out who our world champion is. So a couple things before we actually jump in here and talk about these uh, characters and artifacts. I want to take a second to kind of highlight where we are at in the state of the PvP metagame. Because I think a lot of people are not super thrilled with it. Right now, control characters are insanely strong. And there are very few cleansers that can actually deal with those control characters. Characters like New Moon Luna, Death Dealer Ray, Nikwal, they're pretty backbreaking to play against for most of the player base from what I have found. And since control is so good, and because injury is so good, essentially bruisers, which are an integral part of the metagame, are kind of non-existent. The bruisers that are actually good are characters that are immune to control and have like insanely powerful ultimates and AoE counters like Abyssal Euphine and Navy Captain Landy. Uh, they're equally as toxic, I would argue, as the characters like Death Dealer Ray, Nikwal, New Moon Luna, right? Just overall, it doesn't feel like it's a healthy metagame because they're not reliable answers for most of the player base to deal with things in the pool. Also, certain characters you would expect to be buffed, like Fallen Cecilia or Archdemon Shadow, are nowhere present on this list. So keep all those things in the back of your mind as we actually take a look at the changes here, which are for Judge Kisei, Lionheart Sermia, Pirate Captain Flynn, Abigail, Alencia, Shooting Star Cadiz, and the two artifacts are Otherworldly Machinery. That is Yuna's artifact that you can get for free from the Book of Memories, as well as Fan of Light and Dark, which is Ahmed's artifact. Let's jump into it and start by talking about Judge Kisei. So for Judge Kisei, I have written Virgo Warrior stat line is pretty bad and needs to be changed. Because this is a character that is either trying to be an opener with 115 base speed, which doesn't cut it in the current state of Epic 7, or is trying to be a cleave DPS with like a thousand base attack, which also doesn't really cut it. The character also is incredibly dependent on Ancient Book in order to soul burn to take an extra turn and do her job. Now, she is self-sufficient thanks to the changes to the S2 here. It dispels all buffs before applying a 100% chance to blind all enemies and a 75% chance to defense break all enemies for two turns and also increases her combat radius by 25% per target hit and it cannot trigger a counterattack. So you don't have to worry about Navy Captain Landy messing up your setup for your cleave. Um, essentially, if they don't have Red Politis or Abyssal Euphine, you are going to always take that extra turn by hitting four enemies and that lets you go immediately into wave of light which is going to do pretty good damage if you defense break everybody right and you're also going to get to push back the skill cooldowns by one turn and you get your survivability uh on the skill as well overall really good set of changes to judge key so i think this is pretty much the best you could ask for this character without changing her role or her stat line I expect dedicated cleavers will actually use this character more from now on. Moving on to Lionheart Sermia here, I have that she needs to not be a fighting spirit character because with the releases of Elvira and Sea Phantom Paldus, it basically drove her out of the meta entirely. She used to be one of the absolute best characters in the game last year at Worlds. I think she was the highest win rate DPS last year at Worlds. Since then, she has fallen on pretty hard times, and I don't even think she is playable at the top level of the game. She's just too much of a liability, and that's partially because of the second point. Her base stats are really bad. She has low HP, low damage, low defense for what she actually is, and in the current state of the game, the turn two characters are insanely broken right now and very, very tanky and have passives. Uh, and you know follow-ups like with Blood Moon Haste or Giant Bride Senya that could punish you. So if you go for the S3 on 
Lionheart Sermia, there's a pretty good chance you don't team wipe and you get cracked back on and punished really, really hard. And that's partially because just she doesn't have the stats to really survive the crackback or do enough damage to overpower what are some of these really OP bruisers right now, like Senya or like Empyrean Illinav that has just come out. So the only thing we really got here was the fact that she's no longer a fighting spirit character. So that pulls her out of the gutter. She's not trash anymore. But the buff's like five months too late. She's still good now, like playable, but definitely not top tier. This doesn't make her tier one, probably not even tier two. Like if I'm being honest, this like puts her probably like in the same viability spot as like Rimuru, where you'll pick her once in a while and maybe it works out, but not exactly like the best character, right? Maybe I'm wrong, but overall, this just doesn't seem like it's enough. I think until they adjust her base stats in some meaningful way or give her free stats to supplement that, it's still going to be a little bit rough for Lionheart. So, I mean, I think they just wanted to do something nice for her because everybody was super pumped about the actual skin. Uh, also, now that she's not a fighting spirit character and she's a cooldown based character, she has worse synergy with characters like Sea Phantom Politis or Conqueror Loyus, the characters with the guaranteed dual attacks, because you used to be able to essentially kind of skip ahead and get more procs of I am the victor in a game. As a result, it's not really there anymore. Next up is Pirate Captain Flan, and I have here written Rework, and that's because the character is just, it's not her meta, right? She's not one of these like fast control characters that kind of cleans up very quickly. Uh, she's more of a slower, more methodical, grind you out control character like Solitaria. Solitaria also not super great. She's mostly picked just because of her focus denying passive. But that style of gameplay where you grind people out with like stuns, that's not particularly very strong right now because the cleansers that we do have are insanely strong versus that style of gameplay. Whereas the characters that are strong in the control like setups now are like Death Deal Array, which current cleansers aren't super effective against. And those characters do their job better uh, and win faster, more consistently than the grindy ones like Flan or Solitaria do. So that leads me to believe that Pirate Captain Flan needs some kind of rework because that style of gameplay, it's pretty much absent from top level. So what we have here, I think, is a set of changes that not everyone is going to be happy with, but I do think make the character very good in these long, grindy, turn two, standard versus standard matchups. So previously... S1 would steal a buff, which could get through immunity, and then bomb the target with the artifact, detonate it, cool, and you could soul burn for the cost of 20 souls to take an extra turn, which lets you multi-bomb people or kind of cycle into your S3 faster. There is no doubt that the soul burn change that we got, which increases the effect chance of her new S1, which is now a defense break, that is definitely a worse soul burn than what we had. But I would argue the new S1 is stronger than the old S1, especially when you take a look at the passive. Because with the new passive, you can essentially still steal immunity. It just comes later on. You can't just do it first turn. But bombs inherently do big damage because they ignore a ton of your opponent's defense. If you defense break somebody and put a bomb on them and then detonate it, it does a massive amount of damage and i think a lot of people from what i've seen online are completely overlooking that so this character actually is more of a dps with this s1 instead of stealing stuff and kind of chipping them out with bombs the chip strategy doesn't work in a metagame where everything vomits out damage everything cleanses so now instead of doing you know oh i stun two units for like five ten percent of your health Instead, it's, oh, you don't have immunity. I chip you out for like 50 to 75% of your life and stun you. That is a big change in my opinion and allows her to play kind of the style that she wants to be playing. I think that that is a fairly good change. Now, let's take a look at the rest of what is in the S2. She has 70% critical hit resistance to mirror her sister. I think that is a very flavorful change. You know how I like it when characters uh kind of have similar skills because they're of the same faction or like the same background i think that is pretty cool change i know it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea but i do think that it is better than the damage sharing effect because 
Basic history has shown that most of the damage sharing characters like Seaside, Bologna and stuff, they have essentially fallen out of favor. Like those don't really see too much play. Meanwhile, critical hit resistance on Navy Captain Landy is a bitch and a half to deal with, pardon my French. And it's one of the reasons why she's so good because she vomits out damage and she is literally a loaded coin flip that is weighted in your favor. Having Flan have that same passive, really good. Yes, sure. She is going to have some issues against like say Lone Crescent Bologna or like Red Ravi, but in a proper team comp, you're going to be able to control those characters anyway. So like who cares, right? It's against everything else. You are probably going to be fine. Giving the pillage buff now to everybody else means that your whole team can just kind of take over your opponent's buffs. And in standard v standard, the person with more buffs usually is the one that is winning the game. So that kind of tips the scales in your favor. She again lends herself to this grindy gameplay style, right? Yes, she gets effectiveness buff. It's not inherently built into the kit. But basically, they want you to essentially use at least one move at the start versus somebody with buffs. And then that gets the ball rolling. And from turn two onwards, Flan, I think, is a significantly stronger character. That's just my personal honest opinion. She's significantly weaker to things like guaranteed crits and unbuffables. And turn one immunity is a little bit more rough to deal with her for, uh, with. But other than that, I think that she is a lot better at playing the grind game. Maybe I'm wrong. We will see. But I do think that this change could be pretty good. Like considering how everybody was kind of wrong about the Sylvan Sage Vivian boss, myself included. And then like DDR's changes. I'm saying we should at least give this one a chance because at least on paper... Again, bomb versus decreased defense uh, opponents. It's pretty big damage. And uh, I'm willing to give this one a shot. Next up, let's go to Abigail here. So I have here written free stats because essentially the character is just pulled in too many directions. She needs effectiveness in order for her curse to land, for her strip to work. She needs damage in order for the injury on the S3 to do real meaningful damage. She needs to be fast so that that way she can cycle with her S1. And then also she needs to be bulky because if she dies, then you don't get any value out of her S2 passive blood banquet. So free stats, I think, is the main thing that the character actually needs. Instead, what we get here, S2 is going to be a dispel all debuffs from the person in the back if they go to a 1 HP and get the vampirism. That's a cool change. Would have liked to have seen a barrier given to maybe, uh, I don't know, Abigail herself as well as the person in the back akin to something like Dragon Bride Senya, for those of us who didn't actually get that character. Like, losing 30% of your health to give this buff to them, uh, I don't think that was necessary. We could have probably taken that off and given her a barrier. I would have been 100% okay with that, but apparently not going to get that. And we do get some free stats here on the S3 Scarlet Garden. You get 50% effectiveness on actually using it, so you don't have to really build any effectiveness. And instead, you can lean into speed, health, and damage. Uh, without having to prioritize any ability to actually strip certain characters. So overall, okay set of changes for Abigail, in my opinion. Next up is Alencia here. Same thing. I have free stats written specifically along the lines of like how Red Ravi has a guaranteed crit. Because currently, Alencia needs defense in order to actually survive things. She needs health in order to survive and deal damage. She needs crit chance. She needs crit damage. Uh, and then she also needs speed. So like that's a lot to ask for. Like... Picking four stats, sure. When you start to need like five stats, it gets to be uh, a bit much, especially when the way to play the character is usually on a set like Injury that doesn't provide any inherent stats. So what we got here now is a change to her Soul Burn, and it's a pretty big change. Uh, essentially, Eradicate now is guaranteed to defense break, ignoring effect resistance. This is how you use Ignore. Effect resistance is a Soul Burn, by the way. This is like good design. Where your bruiser, if they get a turn, they get to just essentially dunk somebody with their soul burn, right? And it's not like, oh, I completely wrecked my opponent's entire team. I just wrecked a specific character by using the resources available to me. So that's a huge change, especially because you're guaranteed the trample follow-up. Now, if we look at Noble Blood, I want to jump down to talk about Mind's Eye here. Instead of getting 50% effectiveness, which only really mattered for Genesis, right? So Genesis gets a bit worse with the change to Mind's Eye here. You're not going to strip as consistently as you used to. Getting 10% injury on both Eradicate and uh, Trample means that you get 20% injury just straight up without even needing the injury set. So that's like really, really good. You essentially could... Uh, you're getting up to like 44% injury if you're on the injury set with this thing. 
And if you have 10 souls to ignore ER on the soul burn, yeah, like you're going to do some big damage. You're going to chunk people really, really hard, right? And then if we look at the rest of the stuff here, you get 15% combat readiness in addition to maybe whatever you get from your artifact choice, right? So that's going to help speed her up, help with the stats problem that we talked about. And then 20% critical hit chance. Also going to help, especially because I believe her exclusive equipment is crit chance and her artifact choices also give critical hit chance. So you're going to be able to kind of load this character with actual stats. And because the injury is much higher on her uh, by default, they basically double the injury on the character by default. You probably don't need injury set uh, on the character. You could potentially go destruction set, which gives you even more free stats. So, like you get the most amount of free stats on Destro set. So I, I think right now, this change to Alencia has made her uh, basically a super DPS, like a super bruiser. Like if this character gets a turn and she has 10 souls, she will absolutely rip through people with this set of changes. The problem is it's still a mid speed bruiser, which means most of the bullshit characters still lock her out of the game. This is why I say keep the meta game in mind. If we get a meta shift, this version of Valencia is so damn strong, in my opinion. And honestly, she might still be pretty good. But I think in a world of Death Deal Array, in a world of ML Rat, right? In a world of Naqual, New Moon Luna, and really fast cleaves featuring BBK, this is probably not enough. If we had had things in this patch that address those things, I think the Silencia change is great. And we're not even done. The exclusive equipment here makes it so that S3 pushes back, which is pretty big. Yeah, you lost some effectiveness from Genesis and uh, Mind's Eye here, right? But for those characters that don't really build ER, this is a pretty big thing. You get to strip all their buffs and throw them back. And remember, Genesis gives you 50% CR. So like, hey man, you might be able to actually lap some people with Alencia and put the hurting on them. Like, this is a good set of changes overall for this character. Finally, we have Shooting Star Akades, who all I really have written down here is the fact that I hate the fact that she can essentially stall out RTA games like how Alvira was before her changes with Prophetic Candlestick. Every time I see it on a stream or somebody tells me it happens to them because people are gatekeeping at the end of a season, my heart sinks. I really don't think it should be a thing. I think it is something that you should look into. Prophetic Candlestick keeps causing issues like this. I don't know if the dev team is aware, but you can do it with Shooting Star Katie's. Other than that, she needs a rework in a niche because like she doesn't do anything other than, you know, rope people on RTA and give uh, immortality to green Euphine to farm ancient coins in Labyrinth. That's kind of it. And that's what this set of changes seems to be because instead of getting random buffs, you get an attack buff, which you can extend with Euphine, and it makes farming coins to level up your rings and necklaces easier. Yeah, sure, whatever. We'll take it. It's not anything amazing. Wrapping up the video, let's take a look at the artifacts. Otherworldly machinery is only really used in hunts, so you either need to give it a new use case or just make it better in hunts. 10% critical hit chance, great. Makes Wyvern easier for people who are trying to build those one-shots, their first one-shot team composition. I'm okay with this, especially because this is a free-to-play artifact you get from the Book of Memories. Cool. Give something for new players to farm in order to make their hunt teams a little bit easier. Fan of Light and Dark, that's Amon's artifact. It's a limited artifact, and it probably should just have percentage increase to 100% on the critical hit damage buff. Lo and behold, that's exactly what it got. So that's everything, right? That's everything in the patch. Overall, I actually think this is a good patch. The problem is, it's not the patch the game needs right now. Like, you made a patch with great changes for characters that honestly need it. If we were in a metagame that was like eight months ago, like if this patch came out in like February or like March of this year, slam dunk. In a world where everything is being unbuffable, sealed, Cooldowns are being pushed back. We're being defense broken left and right. We're being stun locked, right? We're being slept. Our characters are constantly at 50% HP because of injury. This doesn't do enough. Like, Judge Kisei, I think, is the only thing that, like, really, really slots in well with what we already are experiencing. The rest of the stuff, while great in a vacuum, I don't think it fits what is being played commonly in world arena but maybe i'm wrong 
So this is the part where I want to hear from you. What do you think of this balance patch? What do you think should have been on the balance patch if you think something is missing? Me personally, again, where the hell is Fallen Cecilia? You promoted her for all the worlds. She ain't even here. Ugh. Smilegate, please. Ugh. Anyways, hopefully I'll see you tonight for the E7 WC 2024 finals. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I'll catch you in the next one. Later.